part one of this series, we spoke to Volvo Trucks product manager Frank Bio about some of the basics on truck aerodynamics and their impact on fuel efficiency. In part two, we'll examine how items such as bug deflectors and sun visors have been designed to mitigate their harmful effects on fuel economy. Well, obviously you can tell at a glance whether a truck is aerodynamic or not, but then when you get right down to it, there are a lot of subtle changes that have been engineered in the truck, right? There are. Let me, let me just tilt this back over and talk about some of the rules of aerodynamics. And there's only three basic rules. The first one is attach air as close to the front of the truck as you can. The second is keep it attached as far back or as long as you can along the top of the vehicle and the side of the vehicle. And then the third rule is transition between the tractor and the trailer as quickly and as efficiently as you can. And what we'll do now is maybe look at some of the areas of a vehicle that can improve or actually uh, remove some of the good aerodynamics. For example, down here at the bumper, when you're looking at the bumper, what you might notice about this one is that as the air is attached here, it travels in a few different directions. One is up across the top, one is around the side, some goes down here and maybe some over to this side. But what we tried to do is to avoid air that's going in front of the tire. And the reason for that is once you start to throw air underneath the tire, it begins to create additional turbulence and has to be controlled a different way. One method of that is using what we refer to as ground effects. On this vehicle, you can see that there's a lot of extended pieces on the front to allow the air to remain attached. That first rule, keeping it attached as far as you can. And underneath the uh, uh, bumper here, you can see that there's some extensions along there. Again, to keep the air attached as far back as you can before you start to transition it. So as air transitions up over the hood, I, I see a couple of impediments. You have a, a bug deflector and then a sun visor, which can't be good for aerodynamics. Well, you know, you're absolutely right. You know, we spend literally millions of dollars trying to reduce the drag on the vehicle. And then a lot of times what's happening is we have customers that'll put a bug deflector right on the front of the vehicle and throws the air over the top and starts it tumbling along. Now, what we see here is a little bit more care in the design of a bug deflector in that it allows the air to attach across the top of the hood for a short amount of time. And then this bug deflector is designed specifically for this model, and it allows the air to flow just to the top of the windshield as opposed to throwing it very high up. Now the other point you mentioned is that we have a sun visor on this vehicle also. And a sun visor will also reduce uh, aero, the effect of aerodynamics. Now a bug deflector can be about 2% when it comes to it if it's mounted on the front of the vehicle. But when you get to that sun visor, that can be about another percent in fuel economy lost. But you notice something about this sun visor, and that is it's a stepped away from the roof of the vehicle and what it does is allows the air to come over the top of the hood over the top of the windshield and underneath there so that the mass air that's underneath here is still attached and that's stepped away from it the other thing that happens at the windshield is the fact that the air starts to flow around the side of the windshield and a windshield like this it allows the air to fly out and then starts to tumble along the side of the vehicle. The same effect as if it's going over the trailer and tumbling. What you see here is a um, eight pillar turning vane that keeps the air attached to the side of the vehicle and then allows it to, re or to stay attached along the side of the truck here. And the other thing you might notice about the side of the truck is that there's very little um, uh, pieces or uh, extensions on the vehicle and that's done intentionally so that the air is not uh, uh, detached at all. Check back with us for part three in which we talk about the trailer gap.